and just shout them out. And so uh, we're going to talk about crimes and who their victims were, what the cost of life was, what the property and the financial terms, how much life was lost, how much money was stolen, and who's responsible for committing them, and what consequences they received. Jail, brutality, or actual reward with more wealth and power. So I want to say, for example, the environment. Can some people throw out some things that have happened recently or companies that have, uh, are taking advantage of the environment? Exxon. Exxon Mobil. BP. BP. National Fuel. National Fuel. Halbert. 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 So, okay, um, uh, war crimes. You want to think about any war crimes? <laughs> that, Entire Congress. Halliburton. <laughs> Halliburton. Halliburton. Bush. Uh, international law that's been broken. Going into Iran. <laughs> <around. laughs> yeah. Uh, Occupying Palestine. Yep. Cubans' rights abuses. Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo Bay. Attica. Attica. WTO. WTO. Erie County Jail. Erie County Jail. NFTA. NFTA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, theft. Theft. Not talking about like someone who's broke who's stealing money from a bank. I'm talking about the theft on a large scale. Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff. Oh, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. Congress. Congress. Enron. Enron. Bank of America. Bank of America. M and T. M and T. Name any some. Uh, Quickly, any other crimes that people can think of that are important for us, that we view as crimes, but they're not being um, prosecuted at this point? Monsanto. County court abuse. County court abuse. Family court abuse. Hydrofracking. Hydrofracking. Corporate personhood. Corporate personhood, 9-11. Mountaintop. Mountain top. Assassinations of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, John and Bobby Kennedy. Yep. So, this list is by no means exhaustive. We can see that the victims on all these crimes are you and me, everyday people. And the scale of all these crimes are enormous. They result in destruction of whole ecosystems, whole economies, whole countries, whole cultures. Death and torture to literally millions. Theft of not small amounts of money that people are full of jail, but billions of dollars. And who is punished and, who, and how harshly and who benefits? Uh, where were the police? When's the last time you saw the police go into an office building, let's say BP, who dumped all that money, all, all that, and killed like in the entire Gulf. When did you see like just police go in there and just beat one of the uh, employees, <laughs> just one of their suits and ties? Like you just destroyed this entire environment, you know, and just like just beat them like mercilessly. Probably not that often. Uh, what, what, now let's just say like when's the last time we saw police just pull like someone over who had a really nice car and lived in a really nice neighborhood and, and had like a, you know, had a really, really expensive job and just beat them just because they were profiling because they were wealthy. Said, oh, you probably made that wealth off the backs of other people. Not that often, but, but we as people in the poor were constantly victimized for no reason just because we don't have any money or because we want to change the structure and order of the society which the police are inherently put there to protect. Um, uh, yeah, so if, if you don't wear a suit, anyway, um, we look back in our history and realize that this history of our country is founded on this kind of crime. Stolen land. This whole continent was stolen land. This is what our country is based off of. Slave labor. Those are crimes, again, exploitation of the environment for the private wealth of the few. These are crimes committed by past leaders against, again, on an enormous scale, resulting in destruction of whole ecosystems, economies, countries, cultures, death and torture to literally millions of people. And this is the heart and soul of what our country is based off of. Without this land, without the slave labor, without that, this country isn't an empire. Um, I would quickly, Lord Amherst is the first practitioner of biological warfare. And he said in his own words, to try to every other method, he gave smallpox infested blankets, encouraging natives to seek shelter with healthy relatives. In Amherst's own words, he said, to try every other method that can serve to extirpate this execrable race. Uh, quickly, Columbus um, said when he came to, uh, saw the Arawaks, he said they would make fine service, servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them all, make them do whatever we want. In return for the natives' hospitality, he told the Spanish royal family, as much gold as they need, 
as many slaves as they asked. He said all the time, thus giving the God, our eternal Lord, gives us victory to those who follow his apparent, uh, against apparent impossibilities. I just want to say that because they're not, this is directly from their mouths. They're not confused on what they're doing. This isn't a, oh, they haphazardly, this haphazardly, the 1% has 99% of the wealth. That doesn't happen that way. It's very um, happened. And they also, men like Columbus have statues and holidays. Men like Lord Amherst have streets and towns and parks named after him. These men are not heroes worthy of such treatment. There is a reason why our society celebrates the murdering, manipulation, and theft of these men. It's only because the same system of exploitation still operates in the same manner as it did hundreds of years ago. Now, who set fire hoses and dogs and clubs on civil rights activists just asking for voting rights, human rights, and fair and equal treatment? The police. Who historically, today, breaks up strikes and all throughout history asking people, workers, asking for fair and decent working conditions, health benefits, workers' right, the eight-hour day? Who jailed Martin Luther King? Who spied and sent infiltrators into his organizations and tried to destroy any influence he had through the media and public influence? Who bombed the whole city block in Philadelphia, killing the MOVE organization men, women, and children? Who killed Fred Hampton? Who drugged him beforehand? That was the FBI informant. Who coordinated his death because he was a leader? The FBI with J. Edgar Hoover. Who fractured Army vet occupier Scott Olson's head? Who Mason Bate jailed thousands of peaceful protesters and broke up peaceful Occupy assemblies? Who coordinated all those raids? Oakland Mayor Gene Kwan told BBC in an interview that 18 mayors had a conference call the night before the nationwide crackdown. Who beat, abused, killed slaves? When the runaway slaves put the, brought them back into bondage? This was the order of that day. The police, a lot in, in America, their origins a lot of times stem right back from slave patrols. And that was the order of the day. They protected law and order. The order of those days were slaves, slavery. So inherently, that's what the police did. And today, it's the same way. Who put Japanese Americans in an internment camps during World War II? Who jails and beats thousands, uh, thousands of people and using millions of public funds to protect private wealthy organizations like the FTAA, G20, IMF, WTO, World Bank? Who banks, who jails and terrorizes whole lands of, uh, anyway, and you get the point. <laughs> uh, uh, this is, the, the, and what are their crimes and what are their consequences? Tell me who is a criminal, the slave who rebels, the worker who strikes, the Black Panther who organizes for self-determination and self-defense, the environmental activist who destroys property that is killing the planet, the youth who refuses to kill, or are the real crimes slavery? Institutional racism, causing cancer for profit, human and workers' rights abuses, exploitation, war. Isn't it our right and our duty to change this injustice? All the above examples are force and violence used on the rich to victimize the rest of us to keep the world the way it is and the class structure in place. They are violent, manipulative everywhere they go in the world to get their way. And they railroad people and the environment. And, and when it comes time for us to defend ourselves, our family, our environment, our children, our homes, when the crime is being committed against us, it's illegal to defend ourselves, to organize, to collectively change this dynamic. They hold a monopoly on power, they hold a monopoly on money, they hold a monopoly on resources, and they hold a monopoly on violence. And we're supposed to be happy and compliant the whole time and work within the guidelines and rules that they have set out, them themselves have set out for us to make the change to the very system that makes them the wealthy in which they are insanely obsessed on keeping. Brutality for you and I and wealth and safety for the ruling class. Police brutality, political repression are hand in hand and are not random. They're not a case of just a few bad apples. They're not someone who just went overboard on a bad day. It's not a case of people taking their job too seriously. Why, you'd be happy if a mechanic took his job too seriously. <laughs> you'd be happy if someone who's working on bridges took his job too seriously, or her job too seriously. You'd be happy if someone who's driving the school bus took their job too seriously, driving our kids to school. No, this is, that is their job. Brutality is their job. Polit police repression is, is by design. And it's, they, they, they carry guns, clubs, mace, handcuffs. And those are, that's what, that is their job. Tasers. They don't bring flowers to show you love or band-aids like a doctor to heal you. They're like a carpenter, except their tools aren't meant for a two-by-four. They're meant for your head. They're like a hunter, but the prey is you. And the gun is meant to be used on you. That's its design. You don't ever see them shoot people who are in the positions of power. They won't. 
Because those are the people who sign their paychecks. Police are paid to a certain degree and risked to suppose to put their, they're not supposed to put their safety over the public or common good. But to justify this violence, people make justifications just like in any other case that, oh, their job is hard, their job is dangerous, they are heroes, they are, oh, the criminal deserved it. Uh, they needed to use that amount of force to protect themselves. Oh, it's just a couple of bad apples. Uh, people complain just to get out of trouble. Uh, without police, we'd be living in chaos. Like, what kind of chaos? Maybe the chaos where there's a little bit of humanity, distribution of wealth, and where people can live without fear. And I'm not trying to downplay that police have a hard role in society, but it's that it's no justification for them to be able to use force on such a high degree against us without any accountability. This justifies their abuse in existence. Not, not again, not them as people, but them as a collective institution. Farmers, tree cutters, garbage men, highway workers, truck drivers, miners, roofers, fishers, all have statistically more dangerous jobs, but you never see a headline when one of these brave men or women die or parade because it's not in the best interest, because it's in the best interest to overflate the risk of police officers to just justify their brutality. This system speaks a language of brutality and force. That is the language this system respects. Look at how they are all across the world. 